what makes the Erlund different from all other mics, the triangular membrane. I'd like to tell you a little about the physics behind Jorin Erlund's discovery that a triangular membrane produces a more transparent sound. The physics of a round membrane means that it dampens incoming sound more slowly than a triangular membrane. To demonstrate this, I have a round object made out of steel that I'll tap. And we notice it rings quite long. It's constructed the same way as an old gong. People have known for thousands of years that a round form rings the longest. When I tap the triangular form, made of the same material and of the same size, we notice that it doesn't vibrate as long as the circular form. A microphone should behave exactly opposite of how a gong does. It should dampen the resonance as fast as possible so that the membrane has room for the next sound impulse coming in. Joran discovered that a triangular membrane does just that and that you can achieve much higher frequencies with a more transparent sound than round capsules are capable of. Transparent sound. In principle, sound is comprised of short impulses that make up a more complex sound. If we look at how a sound system works, we can characterize it by its impulse response. This means that if you introduce a sound impulse to a system, the system will react and then stabilize like so. Since a gong produces a quite long impulse response or decay, a round membrane will take longer to stabilize. The triangular membrane dampens the sound thusly. So what happens when two sound impulses come quickly after each other? The first impulse comes and the slow membrane vibrates like so. Then the next impulse comes before the first has finished vibrating and builds upon the first, which means that the sound gets mashed up a little bit because of this characteristic. If we look at a membrane that exhibits faster impulse dampening, we'll see it can stabilize further before the second impulse arrives and thus provides a more exact representation of the sound coming to the membrane. This means that a microphone membrane with a shorter resonance can provide a higher resolution of the sound and that is the reason a triangular membrane is more transparent than a circular membrane. All microphones that use a circular membrane generate their own background noise as they receive sound impulses. And you can hear that if you listen carefully. Using this reasoning, it's logical to say that a system with the ability to stabilize more quickly also has the ability to handle signals in a completely different way than a system with a slower response time. This is extremely important when it comes to bandwidth, as slower systems cannot deal with high frequencies as well. If we look at transients, that is, sound signals that rapidly differ in amplitude, like when we hit a drum or another fast signal, the slower system will have difficulty accurately reproducing the signal, whereas a signal entering a fast system will be reproduced more or less exactly like it came in. Phase accuracy. A microphone system produces something called dispersion, which means that different frequencies coming into the system go through the system at different speeds. As they exit the system and are added together, they might not look like the same signal that went into the system. This is the reason why if you look at a Bode plot of two different systems, System 1 and System 2, you'll see that their amplitude spectrums are almost identical. And one would think that they would sound alike. However, 
Even though these two systems have an almost identical Bode plot, they can sound very different. This is confusing to many. But if you look at their phasing, you'll see that the phase of system one differs only a little over a certain frequency area. While system number two varies greatly there. This means that the phasing in system two generates more dispersion and will affect the signal in a completely different way than what system one does. And this is the reason that systems one and two don't sound like each other. The microphone amplifier. The amplifier in Erlund's microphone was designed by us and constructed to yield low noise, adequate amplification, and with the lowest possible phase shifting within the frequency we want to use. Our reasoning was to give our system the best transient reproduction possible, which also demands a bandwidth that extends far above what the human ear can hear. The fact is that we can deal with frequencies far above the conventional 20,000 hertz of most microphones. Experiments have shown that we can deal with signals as high as 80 to 90,000 hertz. When looking at frequency curves, we can see that two microphones with seemingly identical frequency curves, one and two, having frequency responses with identical amplitude spectrums can sound completely different. Looking at a Bode plot, we can see that it's not just the amplitude spectrum, but also the phasing that we have to consider. Therefore, System 1, whose frequency curve is represented by the black line and a phasing that looks like this over the frequency area, and System 2, that has a different phasing, represented by the red curve. In principle, this explains why the two sound differently, especially when it comes to reproducing transients. The amplifier in the Erlund microphone, together with the characteristics of its capsule, combine to produce an incredibly natural reproduction because the microphone is phase linear and capable of handling extremely high frequencies. Imagine looking into a clear pool of water at your own reflection. However, when a raindrop hits the water, the surface is broken by ripples distorting your image. And then before the ripples subside, another raindrop hits, and another, and another, distorting your original image beyond recognition. This is what occurs in a conventional round membrane. However, with a triangular membrane, the ripples subside four times sooner, thus allowing for less distortion and a more clear image of the original reflection.